My name is Nate Hodges. I am the artistic director for Rhetorical Dance Company. So the point of this video is to tell you a little bit more about Labiadere. Labiadere was choreographed originally in 1877 by Marius Petipa. He is the mastermind behind the greater classic ballets. Labiadere is what's called an Orient Ballet. Back in the day, they would take all of the places like Japan, India, Thailand, China, and just mash it all together and call it one place, the Orient. So a lot of what you see in the original of Labiadere is ethnographically inaccurate. I totally stole that from Wikipedia. Labiadere predominantly follows the storyline of Solar. And Solar, it's me, Solar is this grand warrior, and everyone just thinks that he's the bee's knees. Hey, hey, Solar, hey, Solar. Cool. I like his hat. And he's coming back from this tiger hunt because this is before endangered species. Yeah. He's rewarded with this giant celebration. And this is where we meet everybody, including the Raja, who is the big king. He's got this daughter, Gamzadi, who is super pretty. The high Brahmin, who is the head priest. And he's got all of his little minions running around him as well. They're kind of nuts, but silly. And then the Bayaders are revealed and they all come out. And Bayaders are temple dancers. And the head Bayader is Nakia. What you don't know is that Solar and Nakia have been having a secret love affair. The two of them reconnect. They're just so in love. And Solar says, dude, let's run away and get married. And she's like, that is a great idea. However, I want you to swear that you will love only me. So over the sacred fire, they take this oath. Solar swears his fidelity to Nakia. What Solar and Nakia don't know, however, is that the Raja has big plans. He wakes up the next morning and he has decided, Gamzadi? Yes, Dad. You are going to get married. Uh, to Solar. Sweet. And then he brings Solar in. He tells Solar, I want you to marry my daughter. And he brings Gamzadi out, and he's totally struck by her beauty. However, he's made this solemn oath, and he's thrown into confusion. He doesn't know what to do. But he doesn't want to say anything against the Raja, so he pusses out and he does it. So now Solar and Gamzadi are engaged. It's already a big mess. The High Brahmin knows about this, so he tells the Raja, this can't happen, the gods will be really, really angry. And the Raja is like, no, he's gonna, he's gonna marry my daughter. To fix the situation, he decides to kill Nakia. Which is so rational. The High Brahmin is pissed because he's totally in love with her. Meanwhile, Gamzadi sees the arrival of the High Brahmin as probably something about her wedding, so she totally eavesdrops. When that happens and she finds out about all this stuff, she kind of wants to check out this other girl. So she has a slave summon Nakia, and she gets there, and Gamzadi's like, oh shit, she's actually really pretty. Realizes that she's kind of a rival and says, well, I just want to let you know that me and, and Zola are going to be engaged. And Nakia goes, that's impossible. He totally swore to me over the sacred fire that he was going to be mine. And Gamzadi's like, mm-mm. And so they get kind of into it. I hate that dress. When Nakia doesn't relent, she tries to bribe her with a bunch of jewels. Nakia's all like, you can't buy me with money. And she gets pissed off. And then she like Hi raises a dagger. I don't know where it comes from, but she's going to kill her face. The slave jumps in and says, no, don't do that. That's rude. And Nakia, horrified at what she's done, runs away. Oh God, what have I done? Act two, we basically find the betrothal ceremony. And Nakia has somehow been forced into dancing at it. One of like the high Brahmin's minions, Magdavea says, oh, here's a basket of flowers. It's from Solar, but it's not. When she goes to smell them, they smell nice. an asp bites her. An asp is a highly poisonous black snake from the Orient. Ah. Where does an asp actually come from? According to the ballet, it takes about a minute and a half to die from poisonous asp venom. She dies. The third act is the most famous of the ballet. It's called The Kingdom of the Shades. We find Solar, who is trying to deaden his grief and misery through opium, which is a really great way to solve problems.
Solar, super upset, strung out on opium. He has this crazy hallucination where he sees girls descending lightly from cloud to cloud from heaven and until there's like 36 of them on stage doing this same variation until by the end you kind of feel like you're on opium a little bit too. And when they're all down, he's immersed in this group of beautiful but dead women. He sees Nakia, and he tries to get to her, but he can't. And every time he gets close, she runs away. Hey, come here. He's very distraught. And finally, he comes to. He's just in the opium den, alone. Oh, and it's this wedding day. Now, for a really long time, Act 4 wasn't done. In 1980, Natalia Makarova reset her own version of the final act on ABT which is basically the wedding and the destruction of the temple. So what we see is Solar comes to, it's his wedding day, and around that time is when the shade of Nakia appears. She basically says to Solar, you totally, you can't do this. You you made a promise to me. Douche. And if you do it, the gods, they're going to find retribution. So he tries talking to everyone. He tries talking to the Raja. He's not having mm -mm. it. He tries talking to the High Brahmin. He's not having it. No the way. vision of Nakia is Douche. running around all over the place. Meanwhile, Gamzadi's freaking out because she's all like, <laughs> She just wants to get married. So in the end, he kind of pusses out and he's like, okay. So he gets married and just like Nakia said, the gods were pissed and they destroy the temple. And it is a scene. <laughs> but the ballet ends on a happy note. So after the entire city is demolished and everyone is horribly killed by the gods, Solar and Nikki are reunited in the afterlife to live happily and dead, but ever after. Happily.